Hello, Jonathan Knight here. I'm back with another video. This will be my DVD um, purchases since mid October. My last video was September 2011, and I haven't recorded one uh, DVD purchases since then. So this will be a, a few, oh, quite a few months of DVDs I bought. And there's not like a shitload of them, but there's quite a few. The first one I'll be talking about is the killer double feature of. Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours. I've seen Bad Dreams before. Um, visiting Hours was new to me. Uh, visiting Hours is actually a pretty good little Canadian slasher movie. Uh, Michael Ironside plays the killer in it and he's fantastic. Um, there's some fairly intense sequences in it. Um, my only real issue with it is it could have been tightened up pacing wise I think it's a little too long in some areas if they trimmed it a little bit it would have been a little better it would have been it's still a good movie but it would have been a little better bad dreams I have like I said I've seen that on the previous anchor bay disc this is a re-release by shout factory and same extras as anchor bay too so there's nothing new bad dreams is an entertaining yet flawed little horror movie it's based it's very much like night like it has a nightmare on elm street feel to it and it actually has jennifer rubin from nightmare on elm street 3 in it it has bruce abbott from reanimator and a couple other people dean cameron from um summer schools in it it's entertaining it has some pretty gory stuff in it and it has an odd soundtrack sometimes at the end credits is um Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, which I thought I was really, it was really unexpected to hear that. This came out the same time as their first album, so it makes sense, but it was still unexpected to hear that on the um, end credits. But these are fun flicks. If you have some extra cash, I recommend picking them up, getting them a shot. I think they're pretty cool. Um, they're two separate discs, it's not a flip. Because um, there's a lot of extras on the Bad Dreams disc. Visiting Hours don't have that much extras. It has just a couple trailers and TV spots and that. Uh, Bad Dreams has commentary track, interviews with actors, special effects stuff, and it has alternate ending and all that. Pretty cool. I got this one for Christmas. This is the Dragon Dynasty Jet Li triple feature with um, Fist of Legend, The Enforcer, and Tai Chi Master. Uh, Fist of Legend is a remake of a Bruce Lee martial arts movie called Fist of Fury aka the Chinese Connection and Fist of Fury is probably my favorite martial art movie I think it's pretty much a perfect martial arts movie and I think Fist of Legend is a pretty much a perfect remake it, it's almost as good as um, Fist of Fury in my opinion and Jet Li just does a fantastic job the fights in that movie is incredible I highly recommend checking Fist of Fury out. If you've seen the Bruce Lee one and haven't seen this yet, yeah, definitely pick up this entire set just for that. The Enforcer, my least favorite film of the set, but I really enjoyed it. It's not as much martial arts action as the other two films in the set, but it has an entertaining storyline, and it has a vi the villain is really over the top and comic bookish and all that, and I kind of like that. It was it was a fun movie. Tai Chi Master is old school Jet Li, very much in his um, Once Upon a Chi um, in China days. I really enjoy this movie, incredible fights in it, the final fight is incredible. Um, I highly recommend picking up the set, you can get it at Walmart for $13 for all three movies. Highly recommend getting it. Next two, I got two. Uh, Ip Man, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, Ip Man 1 and Ip Man 2. Um, these are Donnie Yen martial arts movies about a uh, real life martial art master who trained Bruce Lee in real life and this is like a fictional you know movie about his life and they did two of them um, the first one I watched on Netflix instant and it was absolutely incredible I know I said that about the other films but this is probably one of the best martial arts movies ever made especially in this um, modern age I think this is, it blew me away when I watched this. Donnie Yen was, he was, he, he was fantastic. I couldn't keep my eyes off him in the movie. He, he was kicking ass and taking names. And even better, 
although I kind of enjoyed the first movie a little bit more, is Part 2, Legend of the Grandmaster. This one has probably one of the best fight scenes I've seen on film, and it's in a boxing match at the end of the movie, and it is incredible. It's violent. These Both of these movies are right at R, and they're extremely violent, especially number two. And number two has one of the most unlikable villains I've seen in a martial arts movie. You just want to see this guy get his ass kicked. I highly, high, highly recommend checking these out. And if you're not sure about buying them, which I understand that, Netflix Instant are streaming these movies right now. Both of these movies. And a couple other movies that are on my list, and I'll tell you which ones they are. I recommend these. Um, if you want to see movies with incredible fight scenes and a great storyline and a fantastic performance by Dan Donnie Yen, please check these movies out. Like I said, you don't even have to buy them. Just watch them on Netflix Instant if you don't have it. And if you don't have it, go to a friend's house and watch it. Just check these movies out. Next one on my list is the John Mu Chow Yun Fat movie, The Killer. I saw this movie a few years ago before I actually Dragon Dragon Dynasty put it out on um, DVD and Blu-ray. I saw it on a bootleg. I was blown away. This is, was my first exposure to Dom John Woo. Uh, I shouldn't say that my first exposure to John Woo. My first person to his, you know, films outside of America. His, you know, his original stuff, not stuff like Mission Impossible 2 and all that, which I fucking hated. The Killer, on the other hand, is incredible. I'm going to keep on saying incredible all night because this movie is incredible. Violent, violent, violent action sequences. Great performances. Probably one of the best finales in an action film. Not the best. I'm going to come to the best later on the list. But this movie is incredible. It's two discs. Interviews and all that. Check this movie out. And I'm just letting you know all the movies I'm probably going to show you I do like. Because when I buy a movie and I like it, I keep it. If I hate a movie, I sell it or give it away. Because I don't want to keep a movie I don't like unless it's part of a series. Which, you know, then fuck it, you know. It has to stay, sadly. I checked this movie out. Be I checked this next one out because of the director, Johnny Tao. And it's Full Time Killer. He co-directed the movie. Co-directed it with Wild Cafe. And if I didn't say that right, I apologize. Full Time Killer is one of his earlier movies. I want to say earlier movies. It's early 2000. Because I've only seen his newer stuff, which I'm coming up to. But Full Time Killer was highly entertaining. Not his best work. And not the first I would recommend for you to check out by him. But if you want to see a really good action movie, though... Do check this out eventually. Um, Netflix, I think, might have it for rent. If not, I think Amazon has it really cheap. And I do recommend checking it. It's just, it's pretty cool. It has a really good opening sequence and all that. Some good action. Now, here's one that Johnny Tao co-directed with two other directors. And it's Triangle. And it's one, story, it's one movie. It's not an anthology film. But... There's different sections of the film that all three directors, you know, directed. The first director did the first part, second one did the second, or th and then the third one did the finale. Um, the directors are, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Toy Hark, who did um, Once Upon a Time in China, um, Ringo Lam, and Johnny Tao. And they all take the little section of the movie. The movie's like 90 minutes, so they all do a 30-minute section of this one story. And it's actually pretty, it's an experimental kind of film. And it does feel disjointed at times because there's obviously three different people tackling the subject. But it's actually really entertaining, especially Johnny Tao's segment, which finishes the film. And I just thought it was really entertaining. I was surprised because it very much is a movie that it's an experiment. And it's up to you to determine if it's a successful experiment or one that failed completely. And I thought it was successful because it was entertaining. Exiled. Exiled? Saying it right? Exiled? This is my favorite Johnny Town movie. This is incredible. Like I said, I'm going to keep on saying incredible. Or you want me to see fucking awesome? This movie is fucking awesome. Extremely fucking awesome. This movie is one of my most entertaining action movies I've seen in the past few years. It came out in 2006. So I would say it's 
the best action movie I saw in that decade, from 2000 to 2009. This movie is the best action movie I saw during that time. I finally bought it. It was it's extremely entertaining. There's a couple extras um, making of behind the scenes stuff. This movie is highly entertaining. I, this is the first Johnny Tao movie I recommend you checking out. Check this movie out. Rent it, buy it, just watch it. Next are two jo Joni. Tony Jaw films. Oing Bok and Oing Bok 3. Oing Bok 2 and Oing Bok 3. Now, if you haven't seen Oing Bok, they really don't, the story has nothing to do with these movies. Um, this is, they're, these are like set in the same universe, you know, kind of like the spiritual stuff and all that. Oing Bok 2 is entertaining as all hell. I think it, it's my favorite Tony Jaw movie of the few that he's done. I think the action is incredible. I thought he did a good job directing it. And the final fight was fucking awesome. I'm going to use that now. Fucking awesome. It was fantastic. Now, only box three takes place right after it. And I've seen a lot of reviews that people that absolutely hate this movie. I liked it, but I can see why everyone hated it. It's kind of confusing at times. There's something that happens in the finale that made me shake my head and go, what? There's some great fights in it. And it's violent, but I think he made a movie very much for him. This, if you want to know who Tony Jaw really is, watch these two movies, and especially in the third movie, he's showing his all this his spiritual side. And if you don't understand their culture and all that, the Thai people, you're gonna be really confused. I actually had to look up and you know, understand what the fuck this movie was going on about us about times. Fights are great, but I think Oink Bok 2 is a much better movie. I do like part 3, but number 2 I think is, you know, the better one. I think number 1's great as well. Here's a Jet Li movie, Hero. I finally bought this and watched it. I bought it at a pawn shop. Uh, it wasn't as good as I was expecting. I still really liked it. It just didn't blow me blow me away like I was um, hoping it would. Um, I think there's stuff that happens in the movie that I don't. I think they should have went in a different direction. But there's some really great stylish fight scenes in it. There's one with Donnie Yen from the Ip Man movies. That's a pretty damn good fight. Jet Li's great in it as usual. It's a good movie. I don't think he would have got any attention whatsoever if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Quentin Tarantino, but. It's good, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs>